Hey, what's up guys, I'm Praetorian, welcome back to Millennia. So in today's episode, we're gonna be moving through the Age of Generals. Before we end our turn, we got a couple things we need to do. Uh, first of all, we're gonna go ahead and spawn that artist. We'll just spawn him right here. Because we're gonna be establishing a town for Byzantium with this culture power. Let's put it right here. Can also put it here. And I'll just put it here. Next, we're gonna go ahead and spend these improvement points on all of our outposts. We'll just go through them all and see which ones we need to still upgrade. We're gonna go ahead and upgrade these ones because it looks like the British aren't gonna attack us here. As of right now, we seem to be good. Let's go ahead and spend some more improvement points on upgrading to the military training camps throughout all of our, our cities. I think we've only done that in a few locations so far. So Gaul still has one here. And then, do we have any improvement points left? We don't, not really. We could go and get the, the publishing house here because this is with specialists. Since they are in a premium from flat land here and we need paper in Rome, what we might go ahead and do is upgrade one of these to a publishing house and then maybe get rid of the other one. Cause yeah, you don't need to work in both of those. And then that'll allow us to turn more wood into paper once we have the improvement points here. So let's make sure that this hop gets assigned to that location. Again, I don't think we have the paper, so we know what we should probably have them go to, I don't know, maybe just uh, food or something, or food and production. Yeah, until we get something else constructed here. And we'll do that next turn once we have some improvement points. We're currently earning 136 per turn. So that's what I was talking about where eventually improvement points are just not an issue at all because you earn so many per turn. I heard some people say that this is not well balanced because it does get so ridiculous. Particularly if you have a lot of vassals. Remember, each of our vassals are giving us like three point something improvement points per turn. So when you have a lot of them, that really stacks up. And then you're also getting all the improvement points from your directly controlled cities. So we see China has destroyed that British army here. We need to take a look and see where we're at on the power ratio. Because we have destroyed some of our enemies' armies and taken their cities and stuff. So it should be higher. Yeah, we're at 94% now. We were uh, about 91 point something percent when the Age of Generals started, so not a lot of progress, but uh, it's certainly improved. So it looks like the Egyptians have pulled back. They're coming over here and then they realize they're outmatched and thus decided to retreat. Okay, so we need to upgrade these guys here, but we don't have the best general or commander, I should say. So we might want to go ahead and retire this character, get the experience, and then promote somebody else. And this will give us the warfare experience to upgrade these to shock troopers and a submachine gun as well. And then we want to upgrade one of these to the leader eight. So either one of these two would work. Well, considering that with shock troopers, their attack of 31 is going to be increasing by 10 once we get this one here, which we could get it now, but we're actually gonna get this one instead. The one plus warfare experience from combat per unit. This will just allow us to move through this quicker since we'll be getting more, more experience. So we'll get that first, but eventually we'll get that 10 plus attack. So I think it'd probably be better to upgrade the submachine gun or promote them to the leader. So we'll get that leader eight. It does cost us a lot of experience though. That means we won't be able to get a special operations here, but I wanted to make sure this army is uh, ready to go. And so let's go to move them out. And then we have two armies or two units we want to add to them. And so we're gonna need to pull one of these units out. I want to keep the one ranged. I don't think we need to keep this uh, dragon fire artillery. So we'll probably keep them here for just defensive purposes. We should probably keep them in the town actually. Let's move these over here. And yeah, keep the town secure. We can even spread these units out some. Maybe put one of these into the city. Just let them sit on the fence for now. Until we feel more secure here. 
All right, so we're gonna go ahead and move over here. And I don't know if they have the ability to attack us yet. They do, they have the stone towers. Now somebody told me that if you hold, I think it was control, and then do the attack, then your unit won't move to that location. So let's test that out. And that's if you win the, the battle, of course. Yeah, we did win. We destroyed all their units here. These are pretty outdated. Yeah, the Egyptians have very old units at this point. And we have very good units. You might have noticed that combat power is at 570, and it did seem like it worked. So yeah, if you hold control when you right-click on a unit, you don't move to that tile. So that would be incredibly helpful to, to have known earlier in the series, since there's been many instances where I didn't do attacks because I didn't want to get close to city or I didn't want to move from a particular location, but I was not aware of that. But yeah, that's uh, pretty helpful, and you see that we did get a lot of warfare experience from it. We have all these upgrades that are increasing the amount of experience we get from battles. All right, so this army finished up destroying that enemy unit here. And so remember, now we're gonna go after these locations here. Though it looks like this is gonna take a little while because we gotta move through forest. So that's unfortunate. Forest and, and hills. It's going to take a little while to get through this area here. And then these guys need to wipe out this enemy army here. But again, they're all very weak. Oh, that's a Shogun. Now, they can promote any other Daimyo that they have to a Shogun. So it's not like the Khan where you only get one of them. Of course, if they did have the Khan, then he would be dead by now because you only have him for, for 50 years. So we have achieved several key victories against the Aztecs so far. I'm only taking one city, so now we're going to start advancing against those cities. I'll have to see if we can take this one here. This one would be a lot easier. I'm not sure that we can actually get across the river and then attack. It says we can attack, but I think that's because it's counting the road, which means we attack across the river and take higher casualties. So we're just going to stay here for a turn. And we'll attack in the next one. So these guys could now move over to here. Let's just move one merchant over there. Get them integrated. And then I want to say other merchants coming over to here. So let's start moving over that way. Yeah, not seeing any other British armies around here. Well, there's one. It's just a knight that looks like it'll be destroyed soon. All right, keep these guys moving towards their new tile that they'll be working on. And then here, we're just trying to find stuff to, to ravage, but there's nothing on this coastline. So we're having to go all the way up north. That will allow us to come into our own territory and heal a little bit. And then this ship here, I think we're going to go over this way. There may be stuff that you can raid. Yeah, it looks like they have some some fishing boats. And then we'll get this uh, barbarian unit destroyed. Make sure they can't land on our territory, cause us any issues, because that was a transport ship. And then, yeah, we'll also attack this British fleet again. Get them wiped out. And you can see we haven't taken a lot of damage from those battles, so we will need to, to heal that unit. And then this is uh, the merchants that are coming down to these coastal cities to get established there. So as I said last episode, I think the best place to attack is here since they're in a hill and they're the stronger ones. You know, you're getting that penalty when you do the naval invasion. And uh, that actually stopped us from winning, unfortunately. All right, so do we have anything we can get? Just these ones here. We're going to wait to get something over there instead. Can't get any more for the autocracy. And so I guess we might want to spend some money. Rush a few things out. Like rush out this faction headquarters. That'd be pretty useful. And that'll be our first building that produces ideology. But then we're also going to get all of that uh, warfare experience as well. So that's helping us to satisfy the ideology. But clearly we need a bit more. So let's go after the government bunker next. And so we'll finally be adding to the ideology here. I do want to take a look and see what age everybody's in. So France is still in the age of alchemy. That's how far behind they are. Wow. The British are the age of Renaissance. Everybody else is in the age of revolution. So they have not entered this age yet. 
And so they do not have a faction, with the exception of China being in our faction, of course. So do we have enough money to rush more stuff out? Yeah, we could spend 1080. I'm just gonna see if anything's cheaper though. Probably not, maybe this one. That one's only 301, we could probably get both of these. I could you more culture. Uh, we do need to get something started for the ideology as well, so we'll start on that uh, government bunker. And then let's go ahead and rush this out for Ravenna. And then maybe get the radio station, because you can see they still need more ideology. Yeah, it's going to be a problem. Even when we get all the buildings constructed for some of these locations, particularly Rome, uh, ideology is still going to be an issue. All right, so I think that's it other than improvements. So we can go and upgrade more military camps. And I think we said we were going to work over here on Naples. And go ahead and get ourselves the Haber Mill. And so let me just take a look and see how much paper they have. So they're not going to have any excess paper because we need to assign another one of the population to the uh, publishing house here. Let's go and lock that. Make sure they focus on getting the books. But we do have more logs. How much spare population they have? Just one. Uh, that's an issue in all of our places, but we can take from the poorhouse. We'll do that in a minute. Let's first go ahead and get more logs, because we know we're going to need it here. So let's do here, the logging camp. This here is not part of either of our cities yet, so can't do it there. Could do one here, but they really need more flat ground for Naples, so I don't know if we're gonna, if we're gonna do that there. So currently, they have three logs. Remember, each one of these Haber mills converts two of the logs to two Haber. So we have enough. So let's go ahead and maybe build another one right here. I know they need other stuff. I also get the military training camps improved. They don't really need to go to the fertilized farm because they're doing fine on food. Yeah, let's, let's go ahead and do that and get more paper, guys. Because remember, I want to send Haber to Rome. So we're going to start our... Is this our first domestic export? No, we've, we've uh, had Ravenna sending production. So this is not our first one. But it is the first one going to the capital. And we're going to send both of those to Rome. Alright, excellent. So Rome will be getting more paper. And I don't think they had everybody in the publishing house yet. So we could move somebody. Probably out of a house or something. Although we might not have any spare population. That's kind of the big issue with Rome. They just don't have the needed population. Might have to wait until they grow here in four turns. Trying to think if there's anything else that we could not be uh, investing in. Suppose you don't need all this production here. So if they have like, uh, yeah, they do have excess iron. So you could pull out of that deep mine there. Oh, this deep mine would be the better option. So yeah, we'll pull out of that and go into the publishing house. Get more books, get more knowledge. Now we don't really want to go through the tech screen too fast. Considering the fact that this will determine how much time we have to win the game. Because once we go through all the text that we have access to, we'll have nothing else to research and we'll have to go after the Age of Information. I don't think that will happen though, because we still have all these texts here in Age of Alchemy, the ones in Age of Revolution, and then all the ones in Age of Generals. So I don't think we're going to run out of text. I think what more, uh, more than likely will happen is that the AI will catch up. And then they'll be the ones trying to force us into the next age. But we do have a lot of time, guys, to get the win. Somebody was asking, you know, what was the chance that we leave this age and we're not able to win? You know, we just don't have enough time to complete the, the conquest to get up to the 200% and then we move to the next age, which can happen. I think it's unlikely because I think we got a lot of time, largely because we're so far ahead of everybody else. You're just seeing that nobody else is in the age of generals right now. But remember, they will prioritize moving to the next age. So once they get to the age of generals, they'll research their four texts that they need, and then they'll send us to the next age. And so once somebody gets to this age, we probably have like 
I don't know, because I don't know how fast everybody's researching. Maybe 30 turns. Maybe a bit more. Before we'd be leaving the age. It, it's a lot of time, guys. We'll see what we can do. We're already at 97% now. We did get our Chaos event, which we expected. And we're going to go ahead and just pay the money. So, that's how much we need for Chaos events in the Age of Generals. Alright, so they do have a full-size army here protecting the city. That's going to make it very difficult to get a victory there. And these guys, who are really good units, do need to heal up. So let's just go back into our own territory after that battle and, and let them heal. And I'm hoping that they'll move their armies out of the city while we do that. Alright, so these guys are moving over here. We're keeping them protected just because we have seen that there are some British troops in the area. So we're going to go ahead and integrate a merchant here. So these merchants are getting us a very large amount of money in total when you look at them all. Helping increase our income, which we desperately need because our troops are, are getting more and more expensive. So we're now spending 551 and then reducing that by 89. And then we just we lost all that trade that we had with uh, France. I think we had one merchant in Paris, which was Egypt's territory. And then all the merchants in the Aztec territory, which we had quite a few there. All right, so let's go ahead and send this guy, the last merchant here. Could go all the way over here. We already know that we have two merchants coming over to this area. Frankly, there's only one large city here. We establish one there. The other option, I suppose, is to wrap all the way around here and establish there, in which case it's better to go by land. But this is a, a good-sized city as well, so I'd like to head over here, but there's a French army right here. There's definitely a risk to us. Okay, so I guess we can go over to this one. Might as well. And we gotta go through the forest, so you have to wait till next turn anyways. Alright, so our army's here. Slowly crawling towards these cities. We'll get these ones taken out, just because they're easier. And then this guy is going to go after this city. I did say we would win there. So we're going to take this location, producing more chaos. Yeah, this is not going to be a difficult battle at all. Yeah, we barely took any damage here. So next we'll go after this city, and then we'll come back and take out these ones. We'll likely have the assistance at that point some additional armies. I don't know if these guys would be able to win anywhere. They are kind of outdated. Their strength's pretty good though. That's yeah, not bad. Uh, this army still needs another unit. But they have uh, more modern troops. And like these ones still have knights. They have the uh, dragon fire artillery. And they don't have the most recent leader either. So do need to keep that in mind. Yeah, we'll go down here and see what we can do. Go into their territory and see what kind of success we could have going after either one of these. We just gotta get close enough. Well, that one has a full-size army in it. Okay, so not gonna be able to win there, I don't think. We could easily beat the army, but then when you consider the city defenders and the fact that they can bombard us, you'd probably lose this army if you attacked without assistance. So again, those bigger cities, particularly if they're defended by an army, will need two armies, most likely, to be taken. All right, so yeah, these guys are gonna go ahead and start uh, ravaging the coastline here. Uh, is there nothing there? There's nothing there. So we'll go after this one. Is that the only location? Yeah, I think that's the only location they actually have something. Oop, we could have actually done that now. I thought we didn't have enough movement points, but we do. So I guess 20 wealth, it's not much. It does hurt them a little bit. It doesn't hurt them as much as you'd, you'd want it to. Because they're just not depending off the food and the sea that much. Alright, so these guys are coming over to here. And we'll get them established in the next turn. And then this unit needs to go heal, so this is the best location, closest location. Let them heal up. So we're gonna do the attack here, but you know what? Let's not bring the hero because I didn't see how much damage they took. 
Well, these guys are all full health. But it seems like the heroes always take the brunt of it. So now let me try and hood him into here, and this will allow us to see. Oh yeah, he was almost destroyed. If they attack us here, he probably will be destroyed. I almost want to retire him now to get the experience. Stop trying to like... Yeah, I think we might do that. Because yeah, all it takes is one attack and he's done. So yeah, let's go and retire him and get the experience. We are now stacked on the warfare experience because of all these battles. This will allow us to go ahead and get the next of our national spirits. Uh, while we do want this one here, the water transport, the faster movement would be helpful as well. Hmm. Let's go and get this one. So getting that spawned our first plane. So these are our fighters. And so they just attack other other fighter craft. They don't do any bombing. And so you use them to protect your troops and your bombers. It's not really needed right now because as far as I know, none of our enemies have any planes. I did see that the Aztecs do have the capacity to, to get planes with the two air unit ca capacity there. They at least have the tech for that. But yeah, they haven't haven't constructed any yet, or at least haven't used them against us. Might make more sense to send them against Egypt, though. The Aztecs are basically destroyed. You know, if, if they start using planes against us, then we'll, uh, we'll change up our stance here, but... I think for now it makes the most sense to go ahead and have them go into the city here. So you can move them anywhere in the map, like rebase them to any place that you have a city or, or a town. There's also improvements you can construct that allow you to uh, put air units there so you can get them closer to the front. And then this is their range. So the fighter craft here will cover anything in this range. So if a bomber attacks anywhere here, then the fighter will attack them. I did finish up the tech here for the aerial warfare as well. So that got us the propeller bomber and propeller fighter, as well as those airfields, and then the paratrooper units. So next we're going to do the power projection to increase our maximum army size, just make our troops more effective. Also gives, gets us the uh, command center, so that'll be useful, and the uh, water transports, we changed the naval transports. And you get the warfare domain power to spawn paratroopers. It's all useful stuff. With our focus on war, we definitely want to get those war attacks. We do need to get tanks as well, so you can make an argument to go for those. Uh, let me just see if we want to... Might want to send some more troops. Because we need to save up a lot to get anything here. And these are still pretty cheap, the tactical insertion. Uh, so over here in like Aztec territory where we have at least one army that isn't uh, full, that's this one here. So you could send them an additional unit. Yeah, we could give them the special forces. They're not a, a, a well-built unit. Like they don't have any any artillery. They also don't have any range units here either. Well, they have one range unit. They got the tank. They don't really need artillery at this point because they're just so powerful. And art artillery is also outdated. So that's something to keep in mind. So I think we'll give them the, the extra units because everybody else at least has a full-size army. What you could also do is do the tactical insertion and then get rid of... Let me just see here. Yeah, there's not really anybody to have to promote here. I was going to say get rid of the leader. But yeah, we're just going to do the tactical insertion here, guys. Give them an additional unit, the special forces. Again, could spawn another one. I think that's good for the moment, though. Is there anything we want to rush out? No, not really. Everything's still got a lot of turns left to go. Uh, we do have improvement points to spend, though. So we can just dip around a territory and see what there is to improve. Yeah, we can go and get the military training camp here. So we get that. Uh, also, we can do the deep mine here. Uh, produce some power for, for Naples. Let's see if we have anywhere else we need to upgrade an improvement. Looks like that's all the upgrades currently, outside of this one here, which again, you just don't need the food. 
Well, Kyoto has one of our lowest efficiencies, as does Iberia. And so let's work on these locations just to improve their efficiency here. So you can see that the sanitation is the lowest at the moment. So it makes sense to go ahead and get something for that. I suppose you can just keep all your trash heaps here together. So yeah, we'll do, we'll do another trash heap here. So that'll improve the sanitation. And also they need education, so that's a problem. Uh, a little short on power. I suppose we'll get a school here. I don't know if we have any in Kyoto yet. Yeah, that'll get us some more education. And it gets their new efficiency up to 166%. I want to take a look and make sure that these are being assigned correctly. Because, yeah, you got some in the house here that don't need to be there. Anywhere else. I think that's the only free population we have at the moment as well. So if we wanted to get one more thing here in Kyoto, we could. I'm not sure what we would, uh, we'd get. Could do something with all those olives we have. They don't really need more food. Yeah, you really don't need more food. So you'd probably want to try and get some wealth out of those olives by getting to press. Because that does give you food, but it also gives you some wealth. Where if you instead got the, the kitchen, first of all, you don't know they'd take the olives. It might use the meat. And that gives you luxury that we don't need. I know three wealth is not much, but uh, I think that's probably the better option. All right, so we're going to end our turn. Move on to the next one, since that's all of our improvement points. And I suppose we'll start working on Iberia next. So they do have an army over here and their former city, or next to their former city. So we're going to bombard them and get them taken out. So they did attack us here. Yeah, I think we would have lost that hero if I had left him in the army. So it's probably a good thing that I didn't. Alright, so can these guys bombard us? They can. So we will wait to attack them until the next turn, and this would be a victory. Though, I'd assume they're going to move that army into the city to defend it, in which case it might be a bit more difficult for us to take. They have another army here in the forest. Yeah, this one just wouldn't go well, guys. So let's move over to this city and see if we can't take this one. That's a 10% chance of a win. And yeah, you get bombarded if you lose. Could also come down to this one here and take that. Until we're ready to get assistance with this army. Since, you know, we wanted to go over here first. But we gotta take out this... this uh new Shogun they have. So again, they'll just keep on spawning those. Or changing their damios to that. Yeah, for the chance of a 10% win and, and maybe getting bombarded, I don't know if that's the best way to go, guys. This is not our best army, though. Yeah, I'm trying to keep moving. So let me see if we can't win here against, uh, I don't know about that army, but definitely against Susa. I can see us winning there. Let's just take a look at what the situation here is. Uh, same one. And they have another army here. So we need to get them taken out. We're now at 99% for the faction victory. So almost halfway there. Alright, so these guys we might want to let them heal up a little bit. Or you could use the expiration XP as well. Because claim territory is going to take a while before we can do that. So yeah, it makes sense to just go ahead and use it. We'll make sure we're using it on the right units, though. So we can just keep on moving along here. So we'll attack them. Get them wiped out. And then these guys... I guess we'll take out the, the fishing fleet there. That will result in them getting bombarded, though. For 20 wealth. Might not be worth it. Alright, so these guys have taken out that. And they did get uh, bombarded as well, I think. Unless they were already damaged. And there's nothing else to really do here. So we'll keep moving up along here. Seeing what we can do on the French coastline. I'm not seeing anywhere else. Yeah. Nowhere else to do anything. So they're just not really taking advantage... 
of the the sea and its resources. So there's not a lot we can do there. All right, say so I want to move this guy here. However, we could use this ship uh, and its merchant to go over here as well. Just because there's not really anywhere else to establish them, because this city's not the the largest. I don't know if it's worth doing. So we'll establish a merchant here. That gets us another 21 well per turn. And it wouldn't take us that long to move down there by sea. And they're protected as well. These here are combat ships. So the British do have a bit of a fleet. And we've seen that they had some ships elsewhere. Okay. You don't often see the, the AI build military ships, but they do build them from time to time. And so while their ships are outdated, they're certainly still a threat to us. And so I guess we'll use this unit. I just hope they don't get destroyed because it could be, oh, there's an army right there. All right, so you can't go that way. Two armies. So the British are coming after China hard. All right, so we're just gonna keep these guys here for now. We'll just have them guard. Troops are almost sealed up. And then they'll, I don't know where we're gonna go just yet because it looks like they're gonna protect Salvador and we only have the one army here so we need to be careful with it not lose it now we can rush the government bunker in Kyoto we're only 120 so let's go ahead and get that for the government experience the warfare experience and the ideology and then uh, could get the telegraph office next for more culture they do need power here though and that's only going to become uh, worse, so might as well get the central station there. We'll get that first. Constantinople, how much would it cost to rush this out? 1200 Okay, yeah, we're running chaos, so we'll be more careful with our rushing. So we won't uh, get anything else for now. We do have the Diplomacy XP. I actually want to send an envoy to China. So the closest location would be here in Sicily, and then they could be escorted. So let's go and spend the 44 points to get that envoy here. And then we'd send them out to the fleet, and they'll escort them. Uh, you know what, let's go ahead and get the increased movement now. I mean, I do want to get the drone strike. Well, let's get this, it would be helpful to have it. Uh, we can rush out our culture. We also have engineering XP, enough to get a pioneer right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and do do that so I can add them. Hmm, how many turns would that take us to get over here? Probably wouldn't be able to do it in one turn, but maybe. So maybe not rush this out, see if it's possible to use the culture point to absorb this into Sicily. Yeah, that's what we'll do. Uh, you can see we're now producing ideology here. So we've produced uh, 14 so far. So that gets added to every turn based on the amount of ideology you're generating. All right, so I think that's it. Trading's probably not gonna be that effective now because we can only trade with China. We're at war with everybody else. So other than making sure you get uh, a merchant in every city, there's only there's only so much we can do here. I suppose we could send one more since we're going down there anyways with this fleet here. So let's go and get one more merchant here. Because there's space here. Alright, excellent. So let's go to end a turn. And see if we can't make some more progress on the conquest of the Aztecs. They do have a lot of armies. They're very focused on military as we've seen. They've got a lot of the uh, military national spirits. Like the, the Shogunate one, that is actually a diplomacy XP, uh, national spirit, you know, cost diplomacy XP. But despite that, it is kind of more focused on military affairs. Like warfare is just one form of diplomacy. All right, so let's go ahead and get the outpost set up here. And you know, I didn't think about the fact that he won't be able to do it this turn here. So you have to get get it with the artist, I suppose. And then let's go and send these guys further south. Could let them heal up a bit more. I think it's fine. 
So yeah, we'll get that whenever we get the next culture power, I suppose. For right now, could raise another army, get more submachine guns. Can also create towns. You know what, guys? We don't really need any additional towns at the moment. So let's just go ahead and do the local reforms in Rome. Not so much for the research. Though, of course, we'll get more of that. More for the production. So we can get through all these buildings that they have. So I can start getting some more units. Remember, we're building armies for them. And I also want to build some planes. I'm trying to solve their ideology need. Uh, they did, in fact, ring their troops over here. They feel confident for some reason. So we're going to want to hold control when we do this attack so we don't actually move close to the city here. Fighting against some samurai units. A very outdated leader. Crossbows, field howitzers, and these mounted rifles. So not a difficult fight here. And we can stay in the forest as well. Now they still have an army here guarding the city. Uh, some of those are ones that retreated from this battle. And those guys are also out of the city. Okay. So maybe they'll attack us. Probably not, though. Maybe suicide. If they did. So I guess we'll go over here and see if we can take out this location. You'd expect so. It's a 40% chance of winning. I would think that's good enough. Let's do it. See what happens here. We'll either win or be very, very close to winning. Yeah, we did win. We barely took any damage either. Wow. Alright, so we've taken another location of theirs. That is a Persian city. So I took that from Persia. And then this army here. Can they go out to this? Immediately they can. So we'll get this location taken as well. So yeah, producing a lot of chaos, taking all these uh, cities, but it's half of the chaos that we would be getting if we were not in this age. So this is what's left. They also have an outpost over here that needs to be destroyed. Okay, I was wondering, I saw this on the map here, it's not a priority, but something we do have to take care of eventually. Okay, so we have a total of one, two, three, four, Six cities remaining. So six more cities to get the Aztecs conquered. At which point we can then move our armies across the sea to focus on the French, British, and Egyptians. Currently around 102% for the, uh, the victory. So I, I suppose we'll save up for the artists at 215. Not really anything we need with diplomacy. Could spawn more troops. We're going to save up for the drone strike instead. It's going to cost us 300. We're currently earning 87 warfare experience per turn. Wow, that's fantastic. Considering the fact that most of your warfare experience comes from battle. Now, they do have another army that we can attack. Excellent. That's what I want to see. And so we'll go ahead and attack these guys. They are getting more up-to-date units here. Got some grenadiers, build howitzers. But still, not much of a match here for us. And yeah, each of these battles is getting us more warfare experience. I don't know that we'll be able to do much here with just the one army, other than what we're doing now. That's fine. And then these guys... I'm not sure that they'll be able to go down there because of the enemy armies. Maybe if we go through here, you know, through the forest. There's a Chinese army here. But yeah, those two uh, French armies are definitely a threat to us. And yeah, let's go ahead and spend the experience so we can do this attack this turn. And hopefully just get that wiped out. Okay, we didn't destroy it. But just one more attack and that'll that'll do the trick. Alright, so these guys. They didn't get bombarded. Let's go ahead and go towards these locations that we can raid. Just make use of our ships so they're actually doing something. And then this guy will just heal up over here. 
Yeah, we'll just let him heal real quick. Uh, he's already healed up. Excellent. So let me just see where we want to move him next. There's not really anything around here. I already really control all the seas. I suppose you can come over here and wipe out those bar barbarian ships. For more warfare experience. And yeah, this guy can't go that way. And so we might just have to set up the merchant here. Yeah, let's do that. Eventually it'll grow, maybe. I mean, they don't have anywhere to build a town, so it's always going to be tiny. Yeah, there's nowhere for them to build a town there, so it's just going to be a weak one. There's probably better locations. There's got to be, like, Beijing would be better. Even this one would be better, because they'll eventually get a town. Yeah. That's just a terrible location, guys. We'll go somewhere else. Because I think it'll always only have the fine population. And you're just not going to get much money from it. Really want to rush out here. It's 2700 to get that. Chaos event won't be happening yet. Well, the alternative would be to rush out. Well, this doesn't cost us anything, so might as well do that. Yeah, that'd be helpful. The next thing we'll get is in Constantinople. Do they need ideology? No, they're only at the 27 populations. You don't have to get the radio station. You do get the, the warfare experience from it, though. So I suppose it makes sense, because you're getting the two warfare experience rather than getting a military base and getting the two warfare experience. And you gotta use power to get that. This does not have power drain. So yeah, we'll get the, the uh, radio station here. We do want to get through the warfare experience as quickly as we can. We have a lot of stuff we can spend it on. We still have all these upgrades here. We can also be spawning units, upgrading units. There's so much to, to be done. So for instance, we still gotta upgrade all the units here. And I'm focusing on armies that are on the front. We're trying to build those up, but never got it done. So yeah, I want to make sure we're, we're spending... What's over here? The warfare experience on frontline units. If they even have anything to upgrade. Which they might not. I'm going to keep them pretty up to date. Yeah, it seems like all of them are good to go. So yeah, we'll just save the warfare experience so we can get to the drone strike. Because yeah, it would be nice if we could just take out the leaders and weaken every unit in there just using warfare experience. Yeah, that's fantastically helpful. It means they're not getting the tactic bonus that they would be getting from their leader. Ah, damn. They got an explorer here that attacked their dude. Alright, so that's really the only pain they're causing us. You see China has taken that town over from the British. But yeah, their explorers, you know, that are around our territory have caused us some issues here and there. But for the most part, the Aztecs haven't been much of a threat. They do have a lot of armies, though. Quite a few armies. Did they move all their armies out of here? The Egyptians? Well, that's interesting. I wonder why they would do that. That doesn't make any sense. Alright, so he's going to set up the outpost here. And so, next culture power, which we get in just two turns, we can go ahead and absorb them into Sicily. And then we'll have one of the two islands that we wanted to add into Sicily. Alright, and then these guys, which have that merchant and the envoy, the envoy can be established anywhere. I guess we'll have them go over here. Alright, so... We should take out the army first. Makes the most sense. So get them wiped out. Push them back, apparently. They did not destroy them. And then, same deal here. Let's take out the army first. Although, if you took the city first, I guess that does make sense. You could bombard them. Yeah, you know what? Let's go and take the city in this particular case, since they're right next to it. That's an easy win here. And then we could just bombard them. And weaken them even further. Alright, so that got us a lot of experience, and thus we can now get the drone strikes. And we can get the legacy as well. Because you just have to have the, the four special forces. So that gets you the warfare experience. And a further reduction in our upkeep costs. We're now 24%. So again, that just gets more and more uh, significant. So the cost of that would be 50 warfare experience. So with what we earn right now, we could do one of those every turn. Eventually we'll be able to do two of those every turn. 
But of course, I think it does get more expensive, if I recall correctly, the more you use it. And so that wouldn't really actually be the case. So let's go ahead and construct some planes now in Ravenna. We're gonna get the, the bomber. And then we'll eventually want a fighter as well. Or actually, you know what? I don't even know if we want to build any fighters. These guys don't don't upgrade, of course. So you do need to keep that in mind. That uh, the propeller fighter can upgrade, but the point here is that we're going to win in this age. That's what we're trying to do, so it won't matter anyways. So I think we should just focus on getting these, because you can see the difference. The attack is 146 compared to 93. While the defense is 77 compared to 117. Air intercept range is one higher. The upkeep is also one higher. And then it gets a 3x modifier against aircraft rather than the 2.5. So that attack is going to be even higher. I mean, it's just ridiculously powerful. So yeah, we'll get uh, the propeller bomber and then we'll get another one of these. We won't even get any propeller fighters. In fact, this is so good. It probably, I'm not entirely sure, I don't remember. It's probably better than the other fighter in the next age. So yeah, we'll get ourselves a bomber and then we'll be able to make use of that. And we can also rush this out here in Rome. I think I meant to do that last turn, but then got distracted. Yeah, we'll just rush it out now. That's a cheaper cost. And then we need to get that radio station next. Uh, Gaul can also rush out theirs for just 410. Don't need to get the radio station here, but again, there's not a lot to get. And we want that warfare experience. It just feels like we can never have enough warfare experience now. We have so many different uses for it. And yeah, it seems that we'll just be able to take Salvador because they just left for some reason. So this will be our first like real victory against Egypt. You know, we won all those battles, but this is where we've taken one of their cities for the first time. So that's a big victory for us. All right, so we're now at 105% for the faction victory. And I do not see it being a problem us winning this before the age is over. All right, so moving over to this location, I don't know where those British armies went. We can't see them right now. Uh, here's another army that needs to be taken out. So we'll do the control attack. Get them destroyed. And then these guys are gonna come back to help us out with these battles here. So we can make sure we can take them in just one turn and don't get bombarded. All right, so this guy probably needs to go back. Since he's dealing with this explorer here. I mean, we'll send this, I don't know how helpful it's gonna be, but. And then these guys, we're gonna take out that barbarian, uh, barbarian camp. And we definitely want the innovation over the wealth, though it's a shame we didn't just get, uh, we didn't get the event yet, because we'll be getting that soon. Uh, these guys are fully healed up, so let's do the attack down downhill. And again, our hero is pretty weak. All right. They just can't, uh, yeah, they're just too outdated now. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and ravage their, their fish. Yeah, we're taking over all their territory, so like with the, the land, the land attacks, or the land looting, you could argue is not the most effective thing to do. You know, we're gonna have them join up with this fleet here. Yeah, like when it's all going over to your control anyways, I don't know what's the best way to do it. We'll have these two join up. These two ships are just far more effective. So we moved these guys over here already. I can't land just yet. And there's just not, there's not a lot of cities left. There's all these ones over here though. We'll try and make our way over to them. Let's move these guys. Do have a capital attack we can do. Here in Madrid, so we'll take out that unit. Probably just an Oboy or something. Our stuff here is ravaged. All right, so nothing really to rush out, I don't think. So I believe we could just go and enter turn unless we want to spend some experience. 
There's not really anything here that we need. Can't get the the artist yet. Two turns, we'll get the culture power. So now this is on inner turn. Yeah, the government experience we are earning much slower than we were. That is noticeable. Damn, I killed that unit. We lost a unit, guys. So that doesn't happen often, but yeah, we did lose a unit there. Those guys are obviously incredibly outdated. They're from the, the first national spirit, uh, spirit set, so obviously not great. So you see they do have a large army over there. I mean, just in general, their armies aren't, aren't powerful enough. Uh, there's that British army. And the Aztecs are now moving after that location. All right, so let's go ahead and have these guys land here. And then we'll want to establish just the envoy here. So that would allow us to set up some different packs or whatever, so we could like, you know, trade money, knowledge, stuff like that. You're not really trading it, I suppose. You're both generating it for each other. But I guess all diplomacy is not available in the Age of Generals, because you can't even do that. So that's unfortunate. You should be able to do that with your allies. I don't know why they would limit that. Kind of a strange limitation, I feel. All right, so we now have two merchants over here. You know, they do have some more powerful fleets. It would make sense to get three ships now and move after them down there. Since they have military ships, as we've seen. So they're going after this location. They might actually be able to take that. I don't really want to have to go back to do that attack, though. And we also have a barbarian unit here. Unfortunately. What kind of unit is this? It's an elite barbarian. So yeah, we gotta attack him first. I guess we wouldn't be able to make it to the other units. Considering the fact that these forests are limiting our movement. So yeah, we'll go after that unit next. And yeah, I suppose we have to go back. You can't let this guy take the cities behind us. So kind of a shame we had to do it that way. Alright, so with Salvador taken, now it's more difficult to figure out which way to go because you leave Salvador undefended. I suppose you could send this army here to defend it. Yeah, I guess there's that option. Because we should be able to see them coming through these forests, you'd think. Yeah, I guess that's what we'll do. Because, yeah, they could come from this way, this way. Uh, or this way, just depending on which direction our army went. Now we can't take that location simply because they have an army there. Now we can't increase the size of our army though. Yeah, I'm gonna see if we can draw them out here again. Let's send these guys over here. You know what, I don't think this place is under threat so we can send the explorer here as well. I'm really tempted to go ahead and send these uh, machine guns into this army. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. So they have the full full size army here. 642 is their current military strength, guys. So not bad at all. Uh, we do need to spend our points down there this turn. Damn, there are troops everywhere, guys. Okay, so let me see how we want to do this. I think it makes the most sense to go onto this hill and you can also destroy the alchemist there. It gives us a defensive location in case they attack us here, which they might. That dragoon, the dragoon could attack our explorer here. Let's have to see. I think it would result in a retreat, but. And then these guys, can they win? It's a 10% chance of winning. We have the other army coming in here. Can they get over there? Looks like they would be able to. Okay. So their chance of winning is zero. So you'd want to attack with this army first. I don't know if they can both do it though. Yeah, you know what? Because they would both be in this tile. So let's have this army go over here. And they would attack down. And then this army will go here. So we'd attack with them first since they had the best chance of winning. See how well this goes. Yeah, not too bad. And the only thing that stands is this, the, the stone towers. So very easy win here now for this army. 
And we have gained control of another one of their cities, and these two armies can go after this location next. So not a lot left here, guys, to get the victory. And since we pushed them over here, we can now do the capital attack, further weaken them. And I suppose there's nothing left for these guys to do other than to, to heal up and wait for an escort. Since they have finished up their job there. And then with this army again, we're just going to attack with the explorer. And it wasn't enough to destroy him. Okay. And then I'm going to try and get revenge here. I don't know how well an artillery unit will do. It is an explorer. Yeah, he did push him back, but wasn't able to wipe him out. Alright, and then these guys will go and take care of these, uh, these fish, these, uh, fishermen. Destroy them, ravage them. Alright, and then we're gonna have these guys join up here and then attack this barbarian. So we're at 325 for the warfare experience. Uh, we also got the power of rejection tech, so we now have the navy transports. The command center, and of course we've seen that we've increased the maximum size of our military, and we can do the drop paratrooper as well. All right, so for the next technology, we could go back and start getting some of these. Like we need to get the steel so we can do the rare earth mines. That would be helpful, but we really need to get the space center so we can start moving towards that. And so I think we'll get that next. This will take us five turns. I mean, there's a lot of stuff to get here. Quite a few things that would be helpful. Uh, these here are not going to be useful until you get the uh, rare earth metals. The home front has some good stuff. You can get the MRE kitchen. That'll give you more food, but basically you're not going to get the uh, luxury that a regular kitchen would get. So I don't know if that's even a, a better upgrade, honestly. I don't know why you'd want the rags factory. I mean, I guess warfare experience might be more useful than... Uh, well, yeah, most of these ones here, I suppose, aren't as impressive. And this is nice for the unrest suppression. And it's great because you get a lot of ideology from the propaganda studio, which we seem we do not have enough of that. But yeah, I don't think we're going to invest in that anytime soon. Uh, this will get you more specialists, which we haven't even been using. Yeah, we're going to get the, the missiles next, and maybe we'll go back to the former age and get some of the stuff there. Because there's some good stuff we haven't gotten. Uh, we can't go in and get the propeller bomber. And so we're going to get them moving over to Salvador. And we'll also want to get them coming over here. And then we'll be able to uh, bombard the Egyptians here next turn. And then we'll want to get another one of the VTOLs. And do we want to rush this out for Naples? It's 1,000, currently have 4,200. Uh, Rome really feels like we need to be invested in them, but uh, it's 3,500. Because yeah, there's a lot of stuff to get in Rome. Yeah, I suppose we'll just get this government bunker. But yeah, I want to get the command center. You can only have one of these. I want to get this in, in Rome as well. And I suppose we need the radio stations. We've gotten the ideology to 100%. Yeah, need satisfaction. Still not quite where we want that to be. Could go ahead and rush out the culture, which uh, we will. We want to go to Sicily. That's Sardinia. I did rename some of these islands. It's Corsica is another one that's renamed. And here's Sicily. So we want to absorb this outpost here. Hmm, it does border it. That's interesting. Can you only do that in a location that is directly controlled? Yeah, it certainly does border Sicily. I'm assuming you can only do that probably because it could be used 
as an exploit, I guess, because you could build everything and then uh, add it to your vassal. Okay, so that doesn't work. I see. But we can claim territory, so I guess we'll have to do that. And then go ahead and revert this back to Pioneer and just move him somewhere else. Okay. And so I guess we'd want to just construct a town. I'm just going to claim this territory here and then create the town. And then they would need to go back out to sea, but uh, I don't have an escort. So we want to do that in a, a safe manner. Uh, let's go ahead and get the increased bomber unit attack. That's plus 15 attack for him, so that'd be pretty useful to have. And then we can also do a drone strike for the first time. I don't know who would use that against. Probably the Egyptians. We'd want to do it right before we attack them. Probably want to use that next turn. Could drop a paratrooper. Just going to show you guys what this unit here looks like. So they get the attack bonus against the armored units. So I was looking at where we could spend our improvement points and our specialist points. Uh, here in Iberia, there's only one tile even left to construct anything on. And they only have one population, one spare population anyways. And what they really need, the reason why their efficiency is so low, is they really need power and the ideology, which we're working on. The ideology and the power, we need to get access to this petroleum here. And so we're just gonna wait until we get that. Yeah, there's not really a whole lot to get. This one tile I think we should leave open because we're gonna get all these rare earth metals and then if we want to actually build anything with those, then you gotta have open tiles. So yeah, I think we're just gonna leave them as is. Everywhere else doesn't have population. That's just our main issue across our empire. It's just a lack of, of population to actually make use of. They're just not growing fast enough. I mean, they're growing like every four to five turns, but it's just not enough. All right, guys, so uh, we are gonna have to end today's episode here. We're now 110% towards victory or 109.51% to be exact. So doing pretty well. The Aztecs will be wiped out soon. We're also taking Egyptian territory. The British have pretty much left us alone over here. They don't feel confident they can take out our outposts. Same thing with the French when it comes to our coastal outposts over here. They just kind of left it. Having an attempted to take it, they're focusing on China. I think uh, everybody's kind of focusing on China to a degree. The British, the French, maybe not so much the Egyptians, because they don't even border. They don't border China at all, and they're not exactly friendly with the French. So the Egyptians are still focusing on us, but China's having to deal with both the French and the British, and it feels almost like they're losing towns. Because if you look at this territory here, it's it just seems like they've lost towns. Or something, because it's not as connected as it used to be. I'm not entirely sure. Looks a lot different here. So I'm not entirely sure how the Chinese are doing, but they are fighting two different countries, even if those two different countries are uh, weaker in general. You know, the French are all the way in the age of alchemy, so so far back, while the UK is still in the age of Renaissance. So these are the two weakest countries that they are fighting. But still, it's two against one at the moment. Uh, now, as for regions, you can see we have seven, as does Egypt. But everybody else, this is, remember, just the directly controlled locations. But everybody else has less than that. China, six, four for the rest of them. Uh, the Aztecs, you know, they're losing territory. So that's just how much they have directly controlled at the moment. All right, so we will go ahead and end today's episode here. We'll have to see in the next one how close we can get to Finishing up the Age of Generals, I expect it's going to be several more videos to get this done. Uh, because we, after we conquer the Aztecs, that would not be enough. And uh, we're going to need more armies on this continent in order to make any real progress against our enemies there. And I think we might want to send a couple armies against each, each of them. So maybe like two over here against the British, two against the French, and two against the Egyptians. Because yeah, we, we want to help the Chinese out because they're clearly uh, having issues. And the overall faction victory includes China, so if they're losing territory and losing armies and stuff, then that's going to make it more difficult for us to win. And so we're going to try and help them out by fighting against all three of the countries. 
that we're currently up against. Could focus on just one, wiping them out, but yeah, I think we have the power to, to fight all three at the same time. Once we finish up with those those Aztecs, because uh, that's four, four armies that are freed up. And then in addition to that, we're building an army outside of Rome and an army outside of Ravenna. So that's six armies total. And then we already have an army over here. So I think we definitely have the capacity to, to fight all, all three of them. So I hope you guys did enjoy today's episode. If you did, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. I hope to see you on the next one. And thanks for watching.